Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unity Advanced UI tutorial series. In the last episode, we learned how to create message boxes as well as how to add borders to any UI element that we wish. In this episode, we'll be learning about how to create drop-down menus. Now, drop-down menus are a little bit more complicated than the message boxes we covered last time, so I'll try to cover as much in detail as possible. Now, here's our actual drop-down that I'm talking about. We have whatever is currently selected, as well as an arrow that you can select in order to open the menu. Now, for mobile devices, I also allow selecting this to toggle the appearance of the menu, just so that you have a bigger hitbox. You can see we have two options here. Here's a scroll bar so that if you have more than three options here, then you can scroll for more. Now, obviously, you don't have to have just three options visible at a time. If you want, you can have more or less. That's totally up to you. I even allow customizing for that. You just have to change one line. But you select an option, and your current selection changes. So now we have that covered. First of all, before we go into the code, you'll need a prefab representing a single item in the list. You can see I've already created one in advance. I've called it drop-down item. The only important part that you really need to have here is you want to make sure you have best fit set. This is important because depending on what kind of padding you want to use for your items or how many items there are, the text size may differ. So you want to make sure it adjusts appropriately so that nothing looks too big or too small. So now let's cover the code. So here's the drop-down class. First is our array of items. This is what you'll put into the inspector to say, these are the items I want to show up in the menu. Now, obviously you, you could just have the items created on your menu in advance. The problem with this approach is that whenever you need to make changes, you would have to add or remove text elements to and from your drop-down menu in order to make the changes. In addition, if you have more items than can fit in the visible space, you will have a problem in that Normally, in the editor, you can't change anchors so that they're below zero or above one. So for this reason, it's just much easier to add our elements dynamically. So beyond that, most of what's left here are just references to the different elements of the dropdown. Here is our currently selected item, that bar at the top. Here is our button off to the right of that, the arrow button. Now, I actually use two different buttons, one when it's closed and one when you have the button pressed in and the menu is open. Now, obviously, you can optimize this and just have one button and just change the button's sprite state, which could be a little bit more efficient. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use two game objects because it's much simpler to understand that way. Next, we have a reference to our actual menu. This is the list of scrollable items as well as the scroll bar. Next, we have our actual content. This is how we add our items to our drop-down menu when we create the list. We need to have a reference to the rec transform so we can set the parent appropriately. And finally, the last item, of course, is a reference to our prefab that we created earlier. This integer represents the ID of whichever item was selected from the drop down menu. So that way, any other classes you have can just look up an integer instead of string contents in order to figure out what was selected and then act accordingly. Then finally, this is the line that you would change if, say, you want to show more items or less items at once. Now let's get into the methods. Now right here you'll notice I'm using a wake for constructor initialization instead of start. Unity starts you with a start method. The problem is that start takes one frame before it runs and that one frame could cause problems where if you try to use a created class immediately after it's been created, these variables won't be initialized if you initialize them at start. So for that reason, I use a wake instead. So with that out of the way, we initialize our ID. Of course, if you want to use an, another ID, you can, but typically you want to set it to the top item. Next, we want to make sure that the text of our currently selected item is updated. So we grab that from our content, and then next we want to populate our dropdown list. Now before we get into the populate dropdown, because that's a huge method, let's look into some of these simpler methods. Here's what's called when we click either the selection bar or our arrow button. Toggle drop down. It's very simple. All it does is toggle the appearance of our arrow button as well as the appearance of our drop down menu. Next we have on drop down selection change. This is what each of our items call when they are clicked. 
So each one passes an index. When we get that index, we now have that as our selected ID. We then need to update our current selection so that the correct text appears. And then now that we have selected an option from the drop-down menu, we need to close it. So we want to toggle the drop-down menu. Next, let's finally look over populate drop-down. The first thing we want to do is get how many different items we need to display. So we do that with our int number of rows and we get the length of the content. Next you'll see here I use a flat float of 100 to indicate the height of the drop down. You can of course use whatever number you want. I just use 100 as a reference. However importantly next what you want to do is you want to calculate the height of each text element based on this generic drop down height. Because we're displaying three rows then we want to take our drop down height and divide it by the number of rows. This will make sure all of our items fit within that space. Now, if our total number of items is greater than how many we are displaying, then our scrollable area needs its anchors updated. Because as I mentioned earlier, you can't make anchor values go below zero or above one. So that is where we change it here. First, we need to calculate our new minimum anchor. Our X anchor, of course, is gonna be the same because we're only going downward. Next, we want to calculate a negative value beyond the bottom that will fit the appropriate number of rows left. So let's say we have five rows. That means we want to have negative two items down. So that's why I start with the three and subtract rows from that instead of subtracting the other way around. Once we have this number of items we want to display, we of course multiply it by our text height, divide it by our drop down height, and that gives us a percentage past the bottom. Once we have this anchor, we set it, and then we want to make sure that our size is reset to zero. Then finally, since we changed our total drop-down height, we want to make sure that we update that so that when we start adding our items, the percentages we use for the anchors don't get messed up. So to do that, we want to take our text height and multiply it by the number of rows. And that will give us the reference size we need in order to make our anchors. Now that we've done all this preparation, we're gonna loop over each item. First thing we wanna do is that we want to instantiate our prefab. So here's our prefab. We do a game object instantiation and store it. Then we want to get its rec transform because we'll be changing some anchors as well as setting the parent. So we do that, then we set the parent to our content. And because we haven't really positioned it yet, we don't care about the position, so we set world position stays to false. Next, we have our anchors. You'll see here I use 0.05 and 0.95 for X. This is just personal preference in order to have some padding so that the item is not totally against the wall of the dropdown. You can, of course, use whatever values you want here. The important part is our Y value, though. And because the top of our menu is 1 and we're working our way down, then we want to start with 1, then we want to subtract the appropriate text height. Anchor min is the bottom anchor, so we want to add 1 to our i in order to get the appropriate distance down. Then to get the percentage, we divide by our drop-down height. So let's say this is our first item, and we only have three items. So here our i would be 0, so that would give us no text height, so our top anchor would be at 1, which is correct. It should be at the top. Then our next anchor, because there are three items, our text height is 0.33, because we divide by three out of the whole height. And this gives us 0.67 for our anchor, which is of course correct. And we go down 0.33 each time. Then once you've set your anchors, of course, as I've mentioned from the previous lessons, you wanna make sure your offsets are reset. The last thing we need to do is set our on click event. Now we don't wanna have that set initially on the prefab because the index will change. And there's a reason I'm calling a different method. The reason is, if we added this listener right in here, what problem will occur is that we're using a local variable here and this I updates each time. So as a result, if we did this locally, then each item would use the last index for all of them. And obviously that's not what we want. We want each one to have its own index. And by using a separate method, this index is no longer a reference. It's a completely new variable each time. And of course, don't forget to set the text too. That's important so that players know which item is which. And that covers all of the code here. So now let's actually make a drop down menu. So I'm going to create a new scene as usual. I'm going to add a panel. 
And now in order to make our drop down menu, first I'm going to create a container to hold the whole thing. Let's just call it drop down. And we want to add our script. So we go to scripts and we add drop down. And you see we have a lot to fill out. First, let's actually create all the different elements of our drop down. First, let's go to the scene view. We want to make this an appropriate size. So I'm going to push it up here. Let's make it 200. Make this, no, 500 is too much. Now, first thing we need is a button. This is our selection item. We need this in the top left corner. There we go. Now that we've created this, let's call it drop down selection. Now, of course, this will display whatever option we have. There's nothing initially, so we'll leave it blank. I'm going to make a left aligned, of course. We'll probably also want to use best fit for this, too. Now that we have that set up, let's add the next button, which is our drop down arrow off. And there we go, it should appear right next to our selection button. And we're going to just make this a down arrow. That's our button that's not pushed in yet. And we're just going to have this stay as the standard, normal, highlighted, and pressed colors. So next what we want to do is we want to add our events to each of these buttons so that they open our drop-down menu. Since we're modifying both, I'm going to select both at once by holding command and clicking to make sure both are highlighted. I'm going to add the event. I'm going to select our drop down, or you can just drag it in here. Then select our toggle drop down method. And there you go, it's on both of them now. So now the next thing we need to do is make our container that holds our actual menu. So let's call it drop down menu. Now inside here, we want to create our on equivalent button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna du duplicate this, and drop it in here. there now that everything's positioned our button is exactly where it should be however the difference with our on button is that we want to make it look pressed in so we're going to take this color here so you can see 194 across the board and we're going to use that number for all cases of our button states And there we go. It will now show up as selected. And of course, we already have the method attached, so we don't need to change anything there. Now the next thing we need to do is create our actual menu. Now to do this, we'll be creating a scrollable region. So to do this, you want to create a panel. We're going to use the same X dimensions as our selection item, which you can remember, we use this value. So now this will be our drop down container. And we want to add two elements to this object. First, we want to add a scroll rect. This allows whatever object is inside to be scrolled around. And because this is just a menu, we only want it to move vertically. Other th options are up to you. I'm going to leave it as elastic for now. but. Eventually when we add it, we want to make sure to add a vertical scroll bar here. 
Anything else does not need to be changed. What, the other thing we do need to add, however, is a mask. This allows our item to show through, and we want to still see our graphic. So now next, before I go too far, I'm going to add the scroll bar. Call it appropriately, drop down the scroll bar. Make that a vertical scroll bar here. And of course, it doesn't look like much of a vertical scroll bar right now because of its default settings. So we need to fix that. There we go. And then we're going top to bottom. And our starting size will be at one because we don't have many items yet. Lastly, let's get the content in here. So this will be our drop down content. And of course the size does not matter because the size will be adjusted later in our actual code. Now that we created all this, since the menu should be hidden initially, we're going to disable that. And there we go. You can see how it looks when we toggle it. So now that all that's done, let's hook up everything. So first our drop down selection. We want to link the text element of that. Then next we want to link to our off button right here. And the next thing is our actual drop down menu container right here. Then here we give it the content. Then finally we want to link our prefab which is right here. And now with all that linked up, the last thing we need to do is add some content, of course. So let's say to test the scrolling part, let's add five items. So option one, option two, option three, for comedic, humor, option pi, and option four. There. Now there's one important thing we need to add. Right here you can see we need to link to our content on our scroll rect. So just grab your content object, drag it here. Now that should be the last thing we need to do. So let's go ahead and test this. You can see here our default option displayed. You might want to add some padding so that it doesn't rub up against the edge like that. But we drop it down, you can see our scroll bar updated correctly, and we can see all our options here. Let's say we picked option pi, it updates appropriately, no matter which one you pick. And that is how you make a drop down menu. That's the last lesson I have for now. However, it's now time to hear your suggestions. What type of advanced elements would you like to see me cover? Leave a comment if you have any UI elements you want to see being made in Unity, then let me know. Or if you see anyone make a suggestion you like, upvote that comment, and I'll see which ones are popular, and I'll look into it, and maybe you'll see your suggestion come up in a future video. Who knows? Otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.